YouTube. Welcome back to uh, part two in my multi-part series. I don't know how many parts just at the moment, uh, but my multi-part series on this, the Zoom R24 multi-track digital recorder interface, etc. Um, a series of videos aimed at helping you get the most out of yours uh, if you've only just got it out of the box and uh, imparting to you a little bit of the um, knowledge tips and tricks that I've picked up on researching it and reading and uh, spending a lot of time reading the forums on um, on the R24 which have been invaluable. So this uh, part two is on basic recording, uh, doing your first recording with the R24. Um, we're going to break these videos down dealing with particular themes and so on this one it, it really is at a very basic level uh, choosing an input source um, be it an instrument or a microphone or even one of the built-in microphones, setting your gain structure and your levels correctly, uh, working the controls and getting something recorded to then work with and polish up um, using effects, EQ and all those sorts of things which will be explained in a separate video. So before I start getting into how to do that first recording, um, maybe because this is being pitched at a very sort of beginner level, um, it might be worthwhile spending a few minutes just talking about why we bother in the first place doing anything multi-track. Um, what is multi-track and why do we bother uh, recording multi-track when it seems like a lot of hassle. Um, when the end result that we're all searching for in most cases is a, a nice polished mastered stereo track to listen to. Uh, that's the sort of the product that we're trying to get to. So why not just stick a stereo recorder in the middle of your band space, your rehearsal space, or at your gig, um, or with yourself, if you're singer-songwriter with an acoustic guitar, for example, why not just record yourself in stereo in the first place and save all the hassle? Well, the reason is essentially um, because of the advantages um, and the benefits that multi-track recording brings, that recording to a straight stereo track from the get-go um, uh, will constrain you uh, uh, doing it that way. Uh, the number of advantages, first of all, um, ultimate flexibility around um, EQing and uh, applying effects to individual tracks, be they uh, track one, your guitar, track two, your bass, track three to six, for example, your drum kit, track seven, your vocal, um, you might not want to apply EQ to everything that you record, just your vocal to take a bit of hiss or sibilance out of the vocal. You might want to EQ uh, the drum kit to make one of the drums a bit less boomy or a bit more of a sharp crack off the snare or something of that nature. And if you record in stereo from the off, um, you can't then deconstruct that um, and target your EQ and effects uh, just by uh, one example, uh, you can't target your EQ and effects at the specific track that it is you wish to affect or to EQ. So that's one of the reasons to give you flexibility. Um, secondly, to give you flexibility in the levels of these tracks. Um, if you're recording in, in uh, you know, a stereo sort of finished final master uh, from the beginning, then you're not then able to go in after the fact and adjust all the relative levels of your instrument. So if on listening to that back, you feel that one of the drums are a bit loud, or we could do with taking the bass down just a touch, it's becoming too dominant in the mix, or whatever it might be, you're essentially stuck with what you have. It's not very easy then to go in and start adjusting um, in, uh, individual levels of all the different um, component parts that make up your stereo track. Whereas if they're all recorded on their own track, you can adjust just that one track without affecting anything else in the mix, any of the levels or anything else in the, uh, in the band in, in this particular example. Um, thirdly, um, and for me one of the, the great benefits, we're all very busy now and unless you're a professional musician and doing this for a living uh, or have a lot of cash and a lot of studio time to spare, then the chances are um, getting together as a band with your mates or whoever it is is in your band. Um, it's sometimes quite difficult to do when you're balancing family life, uh, your work life, etc, etc. With multi-track, um, sorry, let's start the other way around. With 
with just recording in a simple straightforward stereo file um, you really need to all be together at the one time in the one place and sometimes that's all right but uh, very often it's not that easy and it might be the case that the drummer and the bass player get a chance to get together for an hour on Tuesday but the vocalist isn't free till Friday afternoon uh, your guitarist and your backing vocal might not be available till the weekend or whatever uh, well with multi-track recording um, you're again freed of those limitations of having to all be in the same place at the same time because you can record the bass track on a Tuesday you can then lay down the drums on a Wednesday get the guitars and the vocals done together on a Thursday evening and at the weekend do your backing vocals and your mix down and your mastering so for me one of the one of the great advantages of multi-track recording in this busy lifestyle I don't do this for a living so uh, I have a day job and I also have a family um, as do the other members of the band so it's um, it's very handy for us that as and when we can get together we just get together in pairs or threes or whatever it is do our respective parts track by track by track and then I can take the recorder over to the drummer's house or whatever it might be and do his part and then bring it all back and mix it as if we were all there together at the one time so that's another benefit of, uh, of multi-track recording so really in short um, ultimate flexibility and um, the the ability to uh, adjust levels uh, independently of one another relative to one another of all the different tracks that make up your file uh, your, uh, your uh, stereo um, production you know your master track um, EQ and effects being able to use those with ultimate flexibility again um, and the fact that uh, it allows you to do different things at different times in different locations and put it all together uh, as if you were you were all there at one time so that's why multi-track recording is worth the effort and it really is because once you get into it it's fantastic you'll never look back really um, so without further ado let's get into the R24 I'll bring the camera over so you can see what I'm doing and we'll look at uh, how to get your first recording okay right let's have a look at doing our first recording with the uh, the R24 something quite simple I'm gonna uh, do an acoustic guitar track and a vocal track on this first recording just to keep things simple so uh, obviously get the thing plugged in and switched on and ready to go we'll look at the connections in just a moment turn it on uh, and the first thing you should be doing is going to create a new project um, the project is essentially your song a collection of tracks that make up your song or in the case of a live performance or a rehearsal your project could be the entire evening made up of all those individual songs which you can then chop up later on into individual uh, uh, songs um, songs and tracks so for this example uh, we're going to go over here to the uh, menu the top row of the menu keys uh, far right marked uh, project we're going to click that and we get a menu here I appreciate you can't see this so I'm just going to talk through what's happening on the screen and the very first option uh, for your uh, project is new and that's the one we want now so we hit the enter button which is at the center of these um, cursor keys here to go into the new project settings we've got four options the very first one is name by default it gives it a number uh, a sequential number this project is uh, PRJ005 the next one I create will be 006 etc etc I can rename those at any time um, or I can do it now uh, by hitting uh, enter and going into the name uh, menu uh, and changing the name using this jog wheel here to adjust the characters and, and a combination of the uh, the enter and the exit buttons to, to um, make your selection and call it something more meaningful I'm not going to bother now but just to let you know that that is available uh, the next option on the menu is setting and you have two choices here you have continue or reset uh, what that does is uh, if you choose continue it will carry over all of your settings your pan your effects and, and various other settings and parameters that you've set up from the last project that you had open on here and it will bring them all in to this new project so you don't have to do all the settings all over again and that's really handy if you're in a band rehearsal setting for example and you've got all your instruments and mics all plugged into these inputs and you're not going to change them you want to make a new song so you go into a new project keep all the settings the same 
choose continue and that make sure that's set to continue and then it will save all your settings and carry them into the new project but for this I'm, I can't remember what I had open last so I'm going to choose reset so I'll just move the jog dial till it shows reset and that will start with a fresh clean project with no settings at all next one down is the uh, the uh, bit rate that you're going to record at it's on 44.1 at the moment which is good for um, uh, a, um, a good decent quality sort of CD quality um, uh, bit rate and then you've got a 48 kilohertz as well um, oh, sorry not bit rate what am I talking about sampling rate beg your pardon sampling rate bit rate is something different so 44.1 or 48 kilohertz this is capable of, um, of recording in 44.1 is good enough for most things for me anyway so I'm going to leave that at 44.1 and then finally the very last menu option is execute and that will now when I hit enter if I have it on execute that will execute that and create the new project with those settings that I've specified at the beginning so I'm going to do that now you get an hourglass on the screen um, while it says creating um, then you get a brand new blank project set to 000 across the timer. All of your lights come on, indicating they're all armed for playback, even though there's nothing on them at the moment. Your project name in the top window, and you can look up the rest of the menu settings in the, um, uh, the screen uh, information in the manual. So we now need to think about our input source. Uh, and for this particular example, as I've said, I'm using an acoustic guitar with a preamp, so it has pickups built in. I don't need to mic anything. I can plug it directly into the Zoom, or I can mic up uh, an amp, or I can DI from an amp or a DI box. Uh, there's any number of ways of connecting, but for the purpose of this example, I'm going to connect the guitar directly to the, uh, the, uh, the, the recorder. And for that, for most regular guitars anyway, you're going to be wanting to use input number one because if you watch the first video in this series you will know that that's the only input it's different to the rest the other the other seven inputs in that it has this little switch here the high z switch where you can um, adjust the impedance of the input to match the the instrument that you're plugging into it uh, improving the quality of the sound and making everything sit nice so oops daisy turn that off beg your pardon so um I've plugged the guitar directly into input one here with a standard quarter inch uh, guitar lead. I have the high Z switch set to on. And then the next thing I need to do is set up my gain, my, my uh, preamp gain using this knob here to bring the signal up to uh, a nice level to maximize the um, signal to noise ratio and ensure I'm getting a really nice hot level but without clipping or distorting the, uh, the input channel. So take my guitar which is plugged in here and I'm going to play this um, sort of as, as hard as I intend to play it when I'm playing so I just have this armed to uh, record which is the red light press it once it goes off press it again now that's armed for record but it's not recording anything yet so let's give it a, give it a smack meter here is it's peaking at 0 dB in the orange segment so you have two greens and then an orange and the red then indicates you're peaking or clipping along with this LED here or you're at risk of clipping or peaking I think there's a certain amount of generous headroom built in uh, so even if you're hitting the red occasionally it doesn't matter as long as you're not constantly lit in the red that means your signal's too hot so uh, I've brought that gain all the way up to about the two o'clock position and that's a nice uh, signal strength for this particular instrument give me a nice orange at the loudest there okay this um, fader here all that does is adjust the volume of the track for uh, monitoring purposes so i can hear myself now i've got quite a convoluted connection set up here because i don't have either a pa or powered monitors uh, stereo pair of speakers to listen to myself so i've got this going into a mixing desk to sum all the channels down to a mono which is going out to my bass amp at the moment the CD in on the bass amp so the sound quality is not great but uh, good enough at least you can hear it for the purpose of this video so for monitoring purposes I've got this set up to around unity gain which is the 0 dB point 
about three quarters of the way up the fader travel. And over here, the master, because everything's coming through the master, I have that up to 0 dB as well. You can hear me. If I cut that, you can't hear me, not through the amp anyway, just the guitar itself. And equally, if I cut this, all you can hear is the guitar, not through the amp. So you need this up to unity gain, this up and around unity gain as well, and you'll get a level on here as well. Nice orange, nice good strong signal, but not, uh, not risking clipping the channel. So I'm pretty much ready to go. As I said, I'm not going to get into effects and EQ and those sorts of things at the moment, because uh, they demand a video on their own. Uh, but I'm just going to lay down uh, a clean, unprocessed, unaffected, un-EQ'd few chords on the guitar now. And the way I do that is I have the particular input arm for record. So when I do eventually start recording, only the thing that's lit red, only the input that's lit red will record. If I had a few more of these lit red, they would also start recording what's coming in. But for the time being, I'm doing this one at a time. So I've got that armed ready for record, lit red. I've got my level input gain nice uh, on the meters. I've got my monitoring signal loud enough that I can hear it. And so I want to come over here to the transport section, these keys here. I want to hit the record button so that also lights up red, as it's just done. Still nothing is recording, it just means the track is armed and the recorder is now armed. And in order to actually start recording, I'm going to hit play. But before I do that, I also want to think about um, do I want to record to a click track or a metronome, the built-in metronome. I'll show you that function uh, either later on in this video or another video. Um, because I'm going into too much detail now for the purposes of just this recording bit. But uh, something you need to think about as well, whether you want to record to a click track, often very advisable, depending on what you want to do with the recording later on uh, down the line. But for now, I'm just going to go ahead and record a few chords. So we're armed for record here, we're armed for record here. I'm going to hit play. The head starts to, the counter starts to move, the tempo lights flashing at whatever tempo is set at the moment. That doesn't matter because I'm going to ignore it. And I'm going to start playing, so... That quickly saves, you get a little hourglass telling you that's saving. I'm going to just knock this to mute so I can unplug my guitar without getting any nasty pops or surprises. Unplug that and lay that down over here. Okay, so what we now have is a nice unaffected, unequed, raw acoustic guitar track coming into input one and nothing else anywhere else at the moment. Uh, I'm going to arm that to play, which is the green light. And now I'm going to skip uh, back to the very beginning of the song. And if you remember on my first video, the shortcut for that is hold down stop and hit rewind. And you're right back to the beginning of the song. And now I'm going to hit play just to listen to that back. So I've got this arm for play, the uh, fader up to the unity gain, the master fader up to unity gain. I'm going to hit play. And after I've stopped talking at the beginning, you'll see the counter spinning already now and the tempo lights flashing and we're good to go. Sounds good to me, okay. So, I'll go back to the top of the song and then maybe now think about laying down some vocal. Okay, so we've got the guitar track laid down and now we're looking at laying down a vocal track. Uh, you have a couple of choices here. Uh, you can either use uh, this is what's this an SM58 fairly standard vocal mic, uh, standard XLR cable into the back of any of these inputs. Really, it doesn't matter. Um, and if you were miking up a guitar cabinet or something of that nature, you could also use it like that, uh, mic'd directly into one of these. Uh, for the purpose of this video, I'm going to use uh, one of the built-in um, Electret. Um, high sensitivity mics built into the device. I've used them uh, a lot on these sorts of recordings and I happen to think uh, the quality on them is really nice, especially when you start putting a few effects on, a bit of reverb or whatever it might be on the voice. So, um, I'm going to use 
uh, input 8, which is this one here. Uh, it's marked on it, input 8, one of the microphones. Uh, so that's paired, if you remember in the first video, to input number 8. So I have to turn the microphones on here to make them selected as my input source for input number 8. Otherwise it's just going to see whatever's plugged in the back here. So I'll flick that to on. That's now switched the microphones on. Um, I'm going to leave um, input number 7 uh, as it is. I'm not using it. So now I need to set my level for my voice. Uh, and the same way that I did with the guitar track on input number 1. I'm going to arm the track for record. So it's um, uh, red. I'm going to bring this up to Unity Gain position there. That's already at Unity on the master. And you can probably hear me coming out of the amp already. I'm going to check, check, one, two, one, two, check, check. Now, that little whistling noise you can hear is my bass amp. It's not really designed for vocal, but I'll, I'll use it for the purpose of this video. So, um, you can see anyway, I'm getting a nice level through. Check, check. Nice level, just peeking in the orange there. So that's probably about right. Uh, and while I'm actually singing, I'm going to turn that bass amp off because I'm getting a bit of feedback. Um, so just bear with me two sets. Just down a bit. With my um, guitar track armed to play, uh, I can essentially mute all of these if I wish. I'm not, they're not being used at the moment. So just for the, to avoid confusion, that's exactly what I'll do. I'm at the beginning of the song. This is armed to play, which means I'll hear it. When I hit record, I'll hear this playing back so I can sing to it. And this is uh, set to record. Uh, we've selected the input source, we've adjusted the um, input gain for the preamp so we've got a nice strong level without clipping the channel and um, we should be good to go. So once again, arm for record, arm for record, we're at the beginning of the song, it's a zero across the uh, display and we're ready to go, so hit play. But what I need to do now is really isolate uh, the microphone so that it's only picking up the singing and not the playing back of the guitar that's already recorded. So you want to try and keep that as clean as possible. So for that purpose, uh, I'm going to use um, a set of headphones so I can hear back in my ears, um, in my headphones, should I say, uh, the guitar part. I can also hear back, because I've got my monitoring level set up here, what I'm singing, but the microphone will only pick up what I'm singing because the guitar part's coming through the headphones and not through the speaker system. And then I'll play it through this, play it back through the speaker, so uh, you can hear both together. So I'm going to pop these headphones on. We're on for record here. I can hear myself. Check one two. Check check. Good level here. On um, that for record. We're at the top of the track. That's for play. And so as soon as I hit play here, we're off and running. I know it's kind of funny, but I just can't stand the pain. Girl, I'm leaving you tomorrow Well, that's why I'm easy I'm easy like Sunday morning Okay, apologies, that'll sound a bit crap because it's just my voice on its own and I've not got the best of voices, I do know that. So I'm going now to unmute my desk over here which is going to allow you to hear what we've just played back. So I'm going to unarm uh, that track now just to arm everything for playback. We've got two tracks lit up green, guitar on track one, um, vocal on, uh, vocal on uh, track uh, or input eight, um, input one and input eight. Um, got the levels set up to Unity, the master up to Unity. We're going to rewind to the very beginning, so we hold stop and press rewind, zero across the board, and then when we hit play, anything that I've got lit for green with the faders up is going to start playing back together. So let's try that and see what it sounds like. All right. Just bringing that level down a little bit.
you get the general idea. So that's now a vocal and a guitar track laid down together. Uh, we've talked about setting the input gain. We've talked about selecting the right input for your source, be it an inbuilt microphone, a handheld mic, a high Z input for a guitar or bass. We've talked about the arming of tracks, etc., etc. And you've now heard them back together. Okay, now what we need to think about uh, is putting some effects in because at the minute what we have is um, a very dry, unaffected, unequued vocal which um, never sounds great, uh, I don't think, unless you're Dane Kiri Tikanawa, I suppose, or some other such uh, uh, classically trained singer. So uh, we're going to look at the effects. Well, we're going to, um, there, there are three types of effects on the R24 um, and you can use them in a variety of ways. The insert effect is quite complicated until you get your head around how it works and then it's extremely powerful. So I'm going to leave that for a video on its own. Um, but the, the um, send and return effects, of which there are two types, there's a reverb and a chorus slash delay, um, are quite straightforward to use uh, and it's quite difficult really to, to run into any trouble with them. So they're always available essentially for any um, any input that's coming in, you've got a uh, send and return reverb and chorus delay on each of the eight um, inputs. You can use them for monitoring purposes. So in other words, I could have set up some reverb for this input here during that last recording, and I could have heard the effect of that reverb back through my headphones as I'm singing, which is quite nice because it gives you you know your nice warm um, vocal. But I've recorded it dry and uh, I'm, uh, I can now add that reverb effect in uh, afterwards, which is what I'm going to do now. So, first of all, we go over to the uh, effect uh, button here and press that. And you're into the uh, effects menu and the three soft keys at the bottom now become the keys to select either the insert effect, the reverb send and return or the chorus. I'll keep referring to it as chorus, but it, uh, it's also the, the delays as well effects are in there. The chorus send and return. So we're going to concentrate on these two middle ones. So let's look at the, uh, we'll select the reverb. Now at the moment the reverb is set to on and we can adjust that on or off by moving the jog wheel left or right. So we'll set that to on. We then come down to the patch which is essentially the type of reverb because there are many different types of reverb on this particular device and one I like to use is number three I think it's no, no number two, Soft Hall, which is uh, quite a nice uh, general reverb, uh, good for general uh, use, particularly the acoustic stuff. We then come down to, you can edit that patch and make certain changes to the parameters. I'm not going to do that for the purpose of this video. You can play about with that yourself and save the patch, give it a new name and all that kind of stuff uh, with the save and rename keys. But then at the bottom, uh, sorry, that, so, uh, so at the bottom then you have uh, your import which you can um, import patches from different projects that you've set up. I'm not going to bother with that. So that's um, the reverb set to on and the type of reverb selected. Okay so now reverb is available for any of these uh, tracks or inputs here and the type of reverb that they'll all get is the same. It's number two soft hall. Okay so we now press chorus and we do the same thing again we choose to choose to put the chorus effect uh, the delay effect on or off with the jog wheel and then move down and select what type of uh, delay uh, or chorus we uh, we like so let's have a look here and uh, I'm going to put an echo echo delay on um, and you can refer to the manual and see what each one does because some are designed particularly for guitars or for vocal or whatever and work really well with different sorts of instruments so you can uh, refer to the manual and it will tell you in the back uh, what works well with uh, depending on what input you, you've, uh, you, you're trying to affect. So um, we have the chorus delay set to on, we have the patch selected, the type of chorus or delay selected, leave the rest, um, doesn't really matter. Uh, they're the same settings as for the reverb. So we then exit out of that and we can see on the home screen here uh, by way of confirmation rev and CHO, C-H-O, lit up at the very top of the screen here. That means the reverb and the chorus are both set to on. So we know that they're, um, they're 
available to be used uh, at the moment and that's because we've just set them up. So how we use them, how we apply them, then comes down to this button here, uh, the Pan EQ button. Okay, so the Pan EQ button has a little line going down here pointing to this little um, sort of uh, um, aid memoir sort of menu here to tell you what's in it. And if you look at this menu, you can see you've got your Pan and EQ controls uh, at the top and then about halfway down, you've got your reverb send level and your chorus send level. So that um, that basically dictates how much. Let's let's concentrate on this one track here at the minute. The vocal track is the one I want to affect. Um, the reverb and and the chorus send control will decide how much from naught to uh, uh, as in none to 100 as in 100 percent all of the track. How much of it is sent out to the effect module, the one that we've. Um, uh, set up already the soft hall module and the echo module they're the two that are in in play at the moment so we'll go ahead and hit the pan eq button at the minute we've got track one selected lit up orange and it says here on the screen track one we don't want to do that one we want to do track eight which is where the vocal is so we'll click that or we could have just come across with the arrow keys till it says track eight here at the top of the menu but it's often quicker just to select the track like that so it's an orange light indicating that's the one we've got selected and it says here track eight pan and eq we're going to ignore those for now and we're going to go down first of all to reverb send rev send and at the minute it's set to zero so we've got no reverb on that track at the moment i'm going to bump that up to 30 so 30 percent of the vocal I'm sending out to the reverb patch that we've set. And immediately below that I've got the chorus send which is set to zero at the moment so there's nothing going to the chorus and delay module, the echo patch that we set up earlier. So I'm going to bump that up to about 20. Okay. And then I'm going to exit out of that and when I play back the, um, the vocal hopefully you'll hear the difference. So we'll just we'll unselect the guitar so we'll just have this playing back we'll go back to the beginning i know it's kind of funny but i just can't stand the pain okay and what i've done is i've i've hit play when i've got to the vocal part i've pressed the mark button and it's put a mark down at the beginning of the vocal so now i can just skip straight to it with these buttons here okay so we're at the beginning i'm going to press forward which goes to the first mark mark number one which is at 33 seconds and, and some. And if I hit play now, you should be pretty much straight into the vocal. I know it's kind of funny, but I just can't stand the pain. You can hear the tail of the reverb there, the echo. And um, if I turn that off, uh, let's have a look, into my effect menu, over to reverb, turn that off, and over to chorus. And turn that off and now try it back to the mark I know it's kind of funny but I just can't stand the pain that's the dry vocal okay and back in again to put that on keeps the same patch as I did before and all the rest of it and the reverb puts it on come back out of it back to the mark hit play I know it's kind of funny, but I just can't stand the pain. Yeah, much nicer, much warmer with that echo and a slight delay on the vocal. Thickens it up nicely and gives it a nice warm, uh, warm affected sound. Now I could have had that set up for when I was um, actually recording it so I could hear that affected sound back through the headphones. I chose not to do that on this particular um occasion so now we're putting it in after the fact and if we left all the, the reverb and and uh, chorus delay send set up as we are doing there and then start mixing down to the master we'll do that in another video then that will be depending on how you've got this set up that will then be recorded to the uh, the master track okay okay we're gonna just spend a few minutes now looking at the uh, swap function on this because it's going to come in quite useful if we want to quickly and easily move this guitar track and put it somewhere else so we can put another instrument like another guitar electric guitar or even a bass guitar into this input with the high z switch using all of that 
um, without having to unplug and replug and, and, and mess about with, with this. We can do it um, quite quickly and easily using the swap, uh, using the, uh, swap function. Now, if you remember the way things sit at the moment, I've got two tracks uh, recorded. I've got the vocal over here on track number eight, and I've got the uh, acoustic guitar part over here on track number one. Let's say I want to put the bass part down on track number one uh, as well now. I'm going to need to move this out of the way. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to swap this track for one of the empty tracks. And what it will do, let's say we pick track five, uh, input five, whatever, track five. Um, it's going to take the guitar part with all its settings and everything I've already set up, the pan, the EQ, the effects and everything, and it's going to swap them over to number five and it's going to take the blank track that is, exists on number five at the moment and put it over here ready for recording um, with the bass or, or with another guitar. So very very quick and easy to do and if you look up from your home screen to the soft keys you see number three here has swap written above it. So we'll go ahead and hit that. Now everything's flashing and it's saying on the screen select track. So we're going to choose the one we want to swap which is track number one and then it says select track which is the track the destination track or the second track rather that we're going to uh, swap it with so we said number five didn't we so let's choose that so now we've got one and five and it says here are you sure yes or no it's on no by default so you can't accidentally do anything we're going to click it up to yes and we're going to hit enter and it says, does the little hourglass very quickly and says complete. Now, if we try and play this back, which before had the guitar part on it, just to prove to you, there's nothing there. It's gone. It's been replaced with that blank track five. But if we look at track five and hit play, there's the guitar. So what we've done now is we've freed up this occupied track and put it over here using the swap function. We've taken the blank track from here and put it over here so there's essentially nothing there. We can now unplug our acoustic guitar, plug in our bass without having to mess about with anything here. We may need to adjust the input gain uh, because we're using a different instrument now with a, a, maybe a hotter output or not as hot an output. So we might need to bring it up or drop it down a little bit, leave the high Z switch engaged set it up for record in the usual way we can play back any combination of what we've already recorded while we're recording the new track and um, bingo we're away so that's it using the swap function very easy very straightforward uh, you can of course swap this track uh, for any of the 24 tracks that you have available to you but you would then need to use the bank buttons to select whether you're using tracks one to eight tracks nine to uh, 16 or tracks 17 to 24 using these bank buttons, then select the track you want to swap it with and then hit the execute um, or yes I'm sure command or whatever it was. So that's it folks, uh, I hope that's been useful. That's very basic recording and a little bit of a taster on um, send and return effects on the Zoom R24, uh, looking at uh, recording vocals, setting levels and, and recording instruments such as guitars etc. So in future videos uh, I'm going to look at insert effects, I'm going to look at bouncing, I'm going to look at mixing and mastering, probably look at the metronome function as well, uh, and maybe even use of the sequencer uh, to program drum uh, patterns and those sorts of things, all that good stuff. So I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, if you want to um, be notified automatically by YouTube when the next one's available, hit the subscribe button uh, below this video. And uh, if you found it useful, uh, and if you like what I've uh, done there, if you found it easy enough to follow, then give me a click on the like button uh, and uh, leave me a nice comment because that always encourages me to make more of these videos. Um, if you didn't particularly like it or thought it was confusing or have any questions about just the things I've talked about on this video, uh, I don't want to stray into the territory of other videos yet that I plan to do. So anything that I've talked about here, leave it in the comments section down below this, um, uh, this video and I always, always respond to, uh, to comment. So good or bad, uh, let me know what you thought and uh, I really look forward to, uh, to hearing from you. Thanks a lot YouTube, uh, over and out, speak soon.